Hello class, so today we're going to be working with watercolors and so you're going to receive uh, a watercolor pan that looks like this. I have two of them here because I'm going to show you how to clean them. You're also going to get two watercolor paint brushes. You're going to need a smaller one and then a medium sized one because we're going to use uh, different amounts of water today. Uh, fun little tip, if you want to make sure that you have a watercolor brush, if you feel the bristles, which are the hair-like pieces of the brush, they should feel very, very soft, kind of like a makeup brush almost. If your brush feels really coarse um, or stiff, um, that actually generally is like a tempera or acrylic brush. So we want to make sure that we don't accidentally use a, a watercolor brush with tempera and acrylic. That's really, really hard on the brush. Um, and then we wouldn't really want to use like a stiff bristle brush because um, that would just not necessarily hold the water as nicely as a watercolor brush does. So um, little tips about your brushes. And then you're also gonna obviously need a little cup of water. You don't need to fill it very full, just halfway is good. And then you'll need a paper towel that we'll use here in a little bit to uh, just clean off our brushes. So I'm gonna move these over and let's get talking first about what a clean palette looks like. So when I open these up, okay, uh, we can definitely tell the difference between these two palettes. This one is the dirty palette, uh, the actual spot where and the paints are sitting into is actually pretty dirty, but you'll notice that's how you can take the tray out is you just kind of pop it out from the middle. Some of them are a little bit trickier, like this one's in a little bit tighter. Some of them are really tight. So just pull from the middle gently, uh, bend it up and lift it and pop it out. So when we go to clean today, um, eventually we will have a bunch of water in here. You'll pop your little tray out and then you'll take this to the sink and wash it with just straight up water. You can use a toothbrush to get into some of the crevices to really get the water out. Um, and the color out. And then uh, we wanna make sure that we're taking good care of our palette as well. So again, this one looks really, really nice. But to, before we even begin the day, I'm looking at this one here. I'm gonna put this one off to the side. I noticed that some of my colors in this palette are not actually true colors. There's like, for example, there's some black on top of this brown. Um, there's, I don't even know if this is brown or green that's in my orange. So this is really, really important with watercolors in order to fix that we have to do it as the first step because watercolors uh, are actually layers of paint uh, kind of crushed and smushed on top of each other so if we uh, activate it with water what happens is this top layer here will lift up and release and then what we can do is we can clean off that top layer and then we'll have all the nice really good layer at, in the bottom so if you don't do this step right away, this cleaning process that I'm gonna show you, what's gonna happen is you're gonna mush all of this dirty layer that's on the top and you're gonna push it down into the other layers and then we can no longer fix it, okay? So the best way to do it is to take a large brush or your medium sized brush, load it up with water and then you're just gonna put a couple drops. So just squeeze your paintbrush um, to drop a couple drops into that little pan area. So I'm gonna fix my brown because it has black in it. And then you actually just need to let it sit for, I don't know, a minute would be good. If it's really, really dirty, you could let it sit for longer. I'm gonna try and get my orange here a little bit too. The longer you let it sit, the more chance it has to mix. So you don't wanna like let it sit for a whole class period. That wouldn't necessarily be good. But now uh, that my, I can see already the black layer is starting to soak up and lift up off the brown. Then I'm just gonna dry off my uh, paintbrush here. So I'm gonna fold my little, paper towel over and then what I like to teach students is that you're not pressing super hard but just gently press and twist your paintbrush and pull it out so that you kind of get this nice little curve um, to your paintbrush we just kind of fix the hairdo and now the trick here is that we want it to be somewhat dry so it's pretty dry now and I'm going to roll it across the top so I'm going to take my brush and just turn this sideways I'm going to roll the brush it's gonna soak up that top layer. I'm just gonna empty out my brush again so I get all that black pigment out. And then I just fold it over, pull the brush through, and I roll again. And I'm just pulling all that black paint off of the top layer. And you can do this as many times as you need to to fix the paint. So if, for example, I saw some more black paint in here that I needed to get off, I would just add some more water again, let it sit, have the black paints, you know, lift off of the base and then go over with a dry brush again to roll it out. So let's see how we do with the orange. Again, just make sure it's really, really clean. Okay. And go ahead and roll. So if you need to take a little time right now, fix some of your, your paint. So 
clean out your brush. If you need to clean out your water after we do this, you can do that too. But we want to take the time right now to fix our paint. Okay, so that looks much better, much improved. I'm just going to fold this little napkin over. And that's how you would clean your palette if it's dirty. Okay, so let's move on to our activity today. And here we go. To complete our assignment today, we're going to need a piece of watercolor paper. You're also going to need what's called transfer or carbon paper that has carbon on one side and then just kind of a gray side that doesn't have any graphite or carbon on it. And then you'll also need a fruit sheet, which you're going to choose three different fruits that you are going to trace the image onto your watercolor sheet. So let's explain how to do that. You're going to take your carbon paper, flip it over so the dark side is facing down. Then you're going to take your fruit sheet and whatever one you choose, I'm going to use the apple. And I'm going to place it over the top of my carbon paper, make sure that it's kind of lined up in the center on my little strip. And I'm going to start just outlining and tracing over the top of the lines that are already present. If I have a nice even pressure, what should happen is that I should be able to just transfer my image uh, from the carbon paper because there's little graphite particles on the bottom side uh, that will transfer then to my watercolor paper. So I'm just going to finish tracing this out and then get back to you. Once you've finished tracing, then just carefully peel up one corner while keeping your finger on the other corner just to see if you actually got a transfer. If you didn't, try not to move the paper, set it back down and retrace. If you did, then you can remove the paper and like I'm doing, just add in a couple lines to make it a little bit darker. Then label this drawing with the complementary color scheme. So I'm just going to write complementary underneath my apple. Repeat the steps again in order to create three fruits across your paper. So I'm working on my second one. Again, make sure that you put your, the carbon paper face down so the dark side is face down. Trace over your image and uh, mark this next one as the analogous color scheme. For the last one, we're just tracing again. And this one is going to be for a monochromatic color scheme. Okay, so after you've gotten all of your fruits drawn out, now it's time to start applying our watercolor in our color schemes that we've learned about today, which are complementary and analogous so far. Uh, we'll get to our monochromatic one uh, tomorrow. So as we're uh, looking at these, we know that complementary means uh, colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. So if we want to just quickly look back at our color wheel here, uh, there are a lot of options that you can use for this. So I could use the classic red and green. Those are across from each other. That's like Christmas colors. I could use the blue and orange. That's kind of like Broncos or Bears colors. Um, I could use the violet or yellow. You could also try these um, tertiary combinations if you would like, but I would suggest just to keep it simple, I would pick one of the easier uh, combinations of just a primary with a secondary. So for my apple, I actually am going to use red and green. And what we're going to discover as we mix these colors together, that if you're uh, mixing wet paint with wet paint, and especially if it's complementary colors, when they mix together, they actually make the color brown. So we're going to be careful as we paint today so that we try not to uh, get too much brown going on in some of our areas. So I'm going to just zoom in here. And as we saw with our colored watercolors, let's start talking about how that works. So um, I said that I was going to use red and green. So how we work with watercolors is I'm going to take my medium sized brush and I'm going to just drop a couple little droplets of water into my green and then I'm going to put a couple little droplets into my red. Okay, so I'm just squeezing my brush that's filled with water uh, and just a couple little droplets and what I'm doing is activating my paint. Uh, in order to make watercolor work it needs water. It's that simple, right? So now that I have my watercolors activated, now I can take my wet brush and I'm going to uh, just make a couple little puddles right above them. This is where your mixing area actually is going to happen. So fun fact, the more water you add to watercolor, the lighter it gets. The less water you add, the darker it gets. So when I look at my apple here, and let's do this so you guys can still see. Okay. 
when I'm looking at my apple, I need to consider which areas am I going to paint red and which areas am I going to paint green. If you want to write it out ahead of time, you can, but uh, for me, I'm just gonna kind of go with it with my tiny brush now. So I'm gonna take my tiny brush because I have tiny spaces to fill in. And I want to keep the classic like red apple on the outside and green maybe on the inside. So you're gonna have to play around a little bit with your colors, what makes sense to you. So I'm gonna start first with red, it's a lighter color. So I'm gonna pick up some of that red paint and I'm gonna mix it in with my water. And again, the more water you add, the lighter it's going to get. The more pigment you add or less water you have, uh, the darker it's going to get. So I'm gonna load up my brush and now I'm very carefully going to start going around the outside of my project. So I'm barely touching it. Notice that it's a really deep red, which is awesome. If I wanted it to be lighter, I could just add more water. Okay, so those are the sections that I want to keep red for my painting. Uh, the remaining sections, I think I am going to make them green. I might decide with those seeds there to make one of those sections red. But now I'm just going to really clean out my brush in my water cup. Uh, a good tip here is that yes, you can run the brush along the bottom of the cup here, but you just don't want to press super hard. That'll ruin the bristles. And then um, just kind of dab it off on your paper towel. I'm going to grab some green. Again, you decide how light or dark you want it to be. Maybe I want it to be a little lighter, so I'm gonna try and dab off some of this uh, extra pigment that I have and grab a little bit more water. I'm just dabbing it off to the side. And now I'm going to start filling in my apple. Watercolor is also kind of another slow process, so if you want it to be less streaky, Okay, you kind of want to overlap and not change your values. So what that means is, like for example, right now I'm going to add some more green in here. You want to try and match your values, how much water you're using, in order to create what's called a flat wash. Now I want to make the stem really dark, so I'm going to add more pigment. So I'm going to just pull right out of the can here. Yeah, I like how dark that is. I'm going to fill in that little top. For my seeds, fill that in just a little bit darker. And I think I am going to go back to red for this last color. Grab a really dark red, so kind of straight out of the can here. Test it out and pop it into that space. I'm okay if you go outside of your lines just a little bit because watercolor is pretty tricky to work with, but I shouldn't be seeing your watercolor spread out over the entire page, okay? So you guys can kind of see here with my example. You know, I've got a couple spots that are outside of the lines. That's okay. okay? That's kind of the nature of watercolor, but Again, I shouldn't see it bleeding out all over the paper. Okay, so I've covered complementary, and you can use a different color set if you're working with a different color set, but now let's move on to analogous. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush, and I'm gonna start again with my medium brush. And for analogous colors, if we're looking back at our color wheel, okay, analogous colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So that would be like red, red, orange, and orange, okay, or uh, it could be even blue, blue, green, and green. Um, I'm doing a pineapple here, so I might want to stick with like yellow, yellow, green, and green, which might make it look somewhat realistic. Okay? If you want to make it abstract, uh, other colors, that's okay, um, but I kind of like that idea of sticking with uh, my common color. So I'm going to take my medium brush. I'm gonna put a couple droplets into my yellow. If you have really dirty water, you might wanna clean it out before you do that step, just so you don't accidentally 
contaminate your color. Add a couple droplets up above there. And because I'm going to be working with my green, I'm gonna kind of keep it close here. Because eventually I'm gonna make a yellow green. So let's start off with the lighter color first, which is gonna be the yellow. And I'm going to grab some yellow here, add it to my water, grab some more, add it to my water, and just start filling in some of these areas. So my game plan is actually to take and put my yellow greens into these spaces. So if I wanted to color the yellow over the top, I certainly could do that just to kind of fill it in right away. But the trick here then is that I'm gonna to have to move quickly in order to get my uh, colors to blend together because if it dries, then my colors aren't going to blend um, together. They're just gonna rest on top of each other. Okay, so I've got the yellow section. So now I'm gonna go in and add some green. So I wanna use some more of this watery green because I want it to be more like a lighter. So you can test this out because I'm done actually using my yellow. I can kind of pull some green over and kind of contaminate it a little bit to make that yellow green. And I'm gonna fill that into some of these spaces. Now I am really loaded up with water. So my, uh, my colors are starting to bleed out. So I just need to reduce the amount of water that I have on my brush. Let me grab that color again and add it to those spots. Okay. Oop, I can make it really green. If you accidentally really go outside of it, here's kind of a cool trick. You can clean out your brush and then you can take it and scoop along to get some of that extra pigment off. So I've cleaned out my brush. I'm just gonna scoop along Hey, it sometimes gets a little tricky in there, depending on how much water you have. Another trick is to take your paper towel, if it's a lot of water, and you can kind of just run it along that edge to kind of just soak up that extra water if you need to do that. So like right here, I have a little bit extra. Okay. And you don't want to pull off so much though that you suddenly don't have any of your color on there, right? So I'm gonna kind of mix these together a little bit, get my green yellow. Revisit again. Oop. Okay, so I like how that looks. Now I'm going to work on adding my green, so cleaning out my brush. I'm going to add just the straight up green right to my base here. Okay. And that completes uh, my part of the assignment for the day. So now it's time to clean up. Uh, if you want to take a quick look again at my tray, there it, it has colors on it, so I'm going to carefully pop this uh, tray out and then I'm going to take this to the sink, clean it 100% with a toothbrush if I need to, dry it as well because if we don't dry it then all the water droplets are going to reactivate all of these watercolors and that would be bad and then you'll close it up and seal it on your desk. Please just take another look at your uh, assignment here. Make sure it's nice and neat. Um, if you have any areas that are kind of really goofy, um, we can have a conversation, but otherwise we should be able to see complementary color example and an analogous color for today. Okay, in order to leave today, your palette needs to be totally clean and left open, just like I've shown here. Your paint brushes need to be rinsed out and set on the desk. You do need to have two fresh paper towels and a clean set of water for the next class.